Hello and welcome to Bread of Life, a daily devotional program which each week features a different area pastor. Our speaker for this week is Pastor Raymond McMahon of Windsor. Praise the Lord, brethren. Welcome to the Sunday broadcast of the Bread of Life. Ray McMahon here. Glad to be with you. I'm the pastor of Praise, Power, and Prayer Temple and Christian School K-12 in Windsor, Connecticut, and we're so glad to be with you on WIHS 104.9. It's wonderful to be at the studio. This is the last of seven messages where we've been touching, barely touching, on the warnings against covetousness. And you know, we talked about 1 Corinthians 6, 9. He lists sins that he warned them, that if people are doing these things, it's basically unrepentant. And so they are not washed, sanctified, or justified. And then we, re- and one of the sins is covetousness. And then in uh, Galatians chapter 5, the liberty chapter, look at this. Verse 13, for brethren, you have been called unto liberty. But my friends, being covetousness always brings a lack of peace and anger and dissatisfaction, a craving. And it's not the, the godliness with contentment. That is great gain. And there's many, even in the churches, I'm sorrowful to say. They almost, they may not think they're doing it, but they promote a doctrine where somehow gaining stuff shows that you're godly. And it's just not true. And he warns the Galatians, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. And he will list these sins. And there's many more than he lists, but... He lists them in a few verses later in, in Galatians 5. So if we have liberty, it's never to continue in sin, but by love. You know, when you're coveting somebody's wife or husband, coveting somebody else's even happiness or position in church and all that stuff, you're not serving anybody by love. You see, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, which can mean a saying, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And you see, covetousness brings the following into a situation and into your life thinking and relationships. He said, but if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. Now, who's he writing this to? He's writing it to the brethren. And he says, this I say then, walk in the spirit, praise God, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And there's a list of the works of the flesh which are manifest, starting with adultery and going through the long list. And in verse 21, he says, Of the which I tell you before, as I've also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You know, John said we're not to continue in sin. Paul said it. Peter said it. James said it. You see, in verse 26, finishing Galatians 5, he says, Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. Paul actually says, if I go back to 1 Corinthians 6, he says, Why don't you rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? I've seen families be destroyed when they couldn't figure out how to divide the inheritance and they got all mad at one another. And it's heartbreaking. And you see... He says in verse 6, verse, uh, 1 Corinthians 6, But brother goeth to law with brother, and that before the unbelievers. Now there is utterly a fault among you, because you go to law with one another. That's what you're doing when you, you think you're breaking up and killing your actual covenant of marriages. Do you know that the Scripture is so plain that only death ends the covenant? But he says, Why do you not rather take wrong. That doesn't seem like the American way, does it? Why do you not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? And that means in any area of your walk. Well, this has been Ray McMahon. Take up the study of covetousness. I think you'll be glad you did. God bless and bye-bye. You've been listening to Pastor Raymond McMahon of Windsor, and this has been Bread of Life, a program to encourage you from God's Word.